So say <laughs> your name so I have it on. I'm Barbara camera. Carter. Barbara Carter. Yep, right. This is the Enbridge Line 6B, the same one that spilled in the Kalamazoo River. So what are they doing then? Whether they had equipment out. They're they're okay, they're fixing the the one that spilled into the Kalamazoo River that's still been busted all this time. Right now they're they're fixing it. But under the pretense of fixing it, they're really expanding it to double its capacity. They're cutting through this loophole and bypassing all these security enforcements. You know, they're not supposed to be allowed to expand it, but they are because they're fixing it. Well, we had an action camp the weekend before the Monday action. So at the action camp, we stayed at um, these people's houses. Their name are Carol and Tom. I, I keep forgetting. That's the last who name. I met, right? Yeah, That's they, who they I were interviewed. there this weekend. At okay, the I interviewed them. Cool. Yeah. Great. It was That's great. awesome. I would yeah. love to see that interview. Yeah. Because their their story. We were at their house all weekend. That was the action camp before the action. Okay. We were at their house. We stayed on their property, which is beautiful, minus the cut down trees and devastation. Yeah. And bridge time. Yeah. Tell me about that day and how you guys decided. Did you do some prep work? There were how many involved in this? Sunday that this happened. And it was just so moving, you know, just to hear. I mean, everyone there, like, almost everyone there was just bawling their eyes out. Like, it, it, just to hear just. What they had done to them. Just regular people yeah. trying to live their lives. It's just. I mean, it's so awful. They're super villains. They really just care only about money. They're they're they don't care who you are. They don't care what you're doing. They're gonna build this pipeline through your property, and they're gonna devastate your property. And there's nothing you can do about it. And if you try to do something about it, they're gonna screw you over even more. You know, it's there's no way getting around it. And and not just that, but the police are protecting them. You know. Anyway. So how many people was, were at the action? At the meeting? action, there was. There was more people at the beginning once a cop showed up and we just started arresting people. A few, quite a few people left. We had our green people and our red people and then the people in between. Um, the red people were definitely the ones locked in. <laughs> Which was you. So the, tell us what you, what you did. You, you had pipes. And... We, we basically, um, we showed up and there were four people who were locking down to the equipment. They had equipment on both sides of the easement, which was probably about a quarter mile across. So we were that far apart from each other, the people locked in. Um, two people locked in on each side. We were locked to a forklift. They were locked to a digger. I don't know what it's called. Okay. Um, so we had the four people locked in, two on each side. And then we had the, the green people with a soft blockade on the outsides on each row. So what went wrong with the whole thing was that on, on the other side that I was on, the farther side, I guess this was a private road that Enbridge had claimed with their eminent domain. So as soon as the cops showed up, they automatically started arresting people. They didn't give any kind of warning. They didn't say, hey, you're on a legal property. We need you to move. A legal advisor, well, she wasn't a legal advisor. She's not a lawyer, but she was our, she was going to be our. Your liaison person. Right, our kinda. police liaison. She walks up to them. They're like, hey, come here. And so she walks up to them like, hi, um, we're doing a protest. And they automatically turn around and handcuff her. Wow. And, you know, they go to the next person. Come here. Handcuffs them. You know, I think Fuzzy was the second one to be, you know. Yeah. It looked like just a normal road. Okay. I mean, it was a small dirt road, but it was There's no a signs, road nonetheless. Though. There wasn't a sign. We have a picture of them po hammering in a sign after. that says no trespassing afterwards. Or during. After. Well, after they arrested some people. So we were on the other side. We were locked in for about six hours. They got them. The police showed up, and they asked us to, you know, to unlock, to move, and we told them what we were there for, that we were protesting Enbridge, and told them we wouldn't leave you know we're, we're here for a reason and we need to finish our job and we need to you know so they kind of waited around all day didn't you know we're just kind of waiting for us to unlock you know going back and forth trying to turn us against each other they had told them down there that we unlocked because we didn't want to want to get the felony charge and that we we urged them to unlock too that that mm. was the best decision and they told us the same thing. They came over and were like, 
you know, down there, Vicky was getting tired. She's kind of elderly, you know, so she unlocked. And she, she wouldn't be too upset if you guys unlocked, too. You know, trying to be all sympathetic towards the elderly. And it was just a bullshit lie. I mean, deep down, I know Vicky. And she, you know, she's as strong and hardcore as I am, you know, if not more. So, um, we're in a lockbox, which a lockbox is basically a PVC piping that, um... You, on the outside of it, you put as many things you can that are hard to cut through. So you put down tar and nails and chicken wire and anything. They're all different, you know, anything that would stop a blade, basically. And then on the very outside, you wrap duct tape. And on the inside, there is a bolt going through it that you lock onto. Mm. So we were both locked onto the inside of this lock box. We had two on each arm. On the other side, they only had one going through a piece, but this machine was... We were afraid Big. that if we only had one, I was so small that they could just, like, fit me through a little crevice in the machine. So we ended up putting two and one through that little, you know. Um, that was a big machine. Yeah, it was a big machine. <laughs> ended up calling in the MSU incident team. They had, like, two huge trailers pull in, and they had to saw us out of there. And they ended up, like, before they went to get us out, before they started sawing us out, they had a huge police van pull up in front of us and set up a pop-up tent and made it so the media couldn't see anything. All of our directs, all of our support, all of the media, everything was just blacked out by these tents The and media vans. were there, though? Oh, yeah, there was a lot of media. Um... But yeah, when they sought us out, they blacked off all the people. And then they threw burlap sacks over our heads as they were cutting us out. That's kind of weird. Apparently for our protection is what they told us. But I think they just didn't want us to see what they were doing. So each of you had a burlap bag over your head and they, they basically tented you so the public couldn't see. Right. No and one so, could see except the cops. And did they use a saw? Did you yeah. see the equipment that they got ready before? Did not see the equipment. They they threw the sacks over our head before they pulled anything out. And could you breathe and, okay? Yeah, I could breathe okay. It was just kind of frustrating, you know. I felt almost like we were being kidnapped. You know, it was very disturbing. Mm -hmm. So then how long did it take them to cut you guys out? Uh, I'm really bad with time, but I would guess probably about 40 minutes or so close to an hour so they actually had a skill saw or like some kind of saw that they were they sawing. kept on pouring water down our arms in case it got hot or you know sparks flew or anything but yeah they we we had our arms and it was a the it, they got the left one out really quick because that that one was made of like plastic pvc pipe but the one we had on our on my right arm her left was um made out of metal. The biggest thing was the burlap sack. I was just kind of uncomfortable with that. Mm. But I wasn't afraid of the saw. I mean, I was I was pretty sure that they mm. weren't going to cut us. We never, we never <clears throat> then after they released you, then what happened? As, as soon as they got us out, they handcuffed us and threw us in the van, you know. Did you have the zip tie handcuffs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the zip tie. Yeah. yeah, they led us over to the van, searched us, zipped our hands together and hauled us off. Were the zips tight, or could you move your wrist? Um, I, I could move them. They weren't too tight. It was pretty okay. decent. It was funny, too, because as he was putting them on me, he's like, Wow, you have the smallest wrists I've ever had to put into handcuffs. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> um, have you always been an activist? or? I've always had the spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Occupy Detroit really like pulled me out of the woodwork, you know. How did you find out about Occupy Detroit? I was actually, it's funny, I was actually at a drum circle, um, this drum circle that I went to regularly every Wednesday. It was like my thing for, everyone should come, it's going to be great. So I'm like, all right, yeah, let's do it. You know, I show up, at, you know. It's life changing. Spiraled into a whole new life. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I was like the peak of change for me, you know, like yeah. everything changed after that. And I'm like hardcore, you know, like before I just didn't know what to do, you yeah. know. Did you know there was a problem? Did you think oh, something's yeah. not right? I mean, I think everybody knows there's a problem. It's how much you admit it, you know, to yourself or, you know, most people don't know why there is a problem. That was my whole thing before Occupy Detroit. I didn't know why. Like, I know things are messed up. I know things just aren't right, but why? 
I, I you know, so, so many people with so much knowledge, and you know, like you start getting to the bottom of the things. Like, oh, this is why things are happening. You know, the the government's being paid off by the corporations who are, you know, really controlled by the banks. Who, <laughs> you know, you you get to the bottom of it, and you're like, man, no. now I'm pissed off. Right. You know, before like the Matrix. You know, like how far does like do you want to jump down the rabbit hole? Yeah. Do you want to see how far things really actually go, or would you rather stay on the surface? Yeah, you know? some people choose to not. Occupy, Occupy was like the rabbit hole. Like, this is the red pill, take it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And then once you do, it's pretty hard to ignore what's right. going on. now I'm like on this whole other side. Now I look at the rest of society and I'm like, what's happening? Yeah. Why don't Why don't you realize? But at one point I didn't realize. Yeah. I knew things were messed up, you know. At that point, I was just like, man, things are backwards. Everything is backwards. Yeah. When we were little, we played cops and robbers, and the cops were the good guys, and the robbers were the bad guys. What do you see? What would you like to, if you could fix one thing, we, we have a magic wand, what would you like to see? Probably green energy. The The absolute... You know, just no more oil usage at all. Yeah, we really have to. If I, if I can make that happen with a snap of the fingers, yeah, yeah, that's what I would make happen. I think I because I'm worried that there won't be a generation of for our grandchildren. You know, for my grandchildren, I don't think they'll be yeah. able to survive. That's yeah. a scary thought. Yeah. So you have your hearing on Thursday, Thursday. which we hope we can get a Thursday, busload of people to come down there. It's going to be an early morning. You. Lots yeah. of coffee. <laughs> now, are you nervous? Do you, do you think about bit. the consequences now more so? More so than beforehand. <laughs> yeah. What I'm being charged for? Resisting. What are the charges? Yeah. It's a misdemeanor for trespassing and then a resisting obstructing felony charge. Resisting arrest. It's maximum two years. But what's interesting about that charge is in Michigan, it falls under the same line as assaulting a police officer. Oh is the same as a resisting and obstructing. It's like, same sentence, same everything, mm. which is... Would you take a plea? What would maybe, be the plea, do you think? What would they say? Depending on... Yeah, we don't know. We don't, we don't even know if they're going to offer a plea bargain. Yeah. If they do offer a plea bargain to drop our felony and not send any of us to jail, maybe we'll take it. You know, maybe. Mm. We, um, that's kind of how we're all feeling right now. Like, maybe, depending on what the plea bargain is, and, you know, like, none of us really want to take it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, none of us really want to go to jail either. No. And I don't want a but felony You could get in there record. and organize the prisoners. You could start another Occupy the Jail. That thought crossed my mind. <laughs> that would be fun. Right. Right. Okay, so. well, we're going to be following you. We're going to go Wednesday night, so we're there for first thing <laughs> Thursday morning. At least I think... You know, I would like to. Go out and Wednesday so, night? Yeah, so we're there first thing. Because, you know, occupy time, trying to get everybody right. on. Because right. I hear that you, makes sense. you don't know if you're going to be up first or last. And so it could be sitting there all day waiting. Right. But I thought if we're going to go, it would be, you know, smart to be there for the thing. So, so thank you. So we're going to watch. And then we will talk to you after and see what all happens. Right. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Barb. Anything else that you want to say? Um... Come to my court date? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs>